Keys, the FCC proposes a 60 day unlocking rule for all mobile phones. So basically in so many words, the FCC, basically the federal communications commission, they just basically said that they have a new rule out that, or they're proposing a new rule that they just basically want all consumers to have an unlock for their cell phones to make it easier for them to switch carriers. And basically it doesn't matter what kind of phone service you have. They just said that the proposed regulation would mandate that mobile providers unlock phones within 60 days of activation. And currently the process of unlocking cell phones, which allows a device to be used with different carriers can be a big headache is what they're saying. And basically you're just tied or you just say you don't know how to do it. You're stuck with a single provider until you actually pay the phone off, unless you want to just go through the hoops and hurdles. I know that certain carriers allow you to unlock your phone up to 90 days throughout a year. So three months out of the year, you can have it unlocked until you actually pay the phone off. But if you're on a payment plan, that's their way of keeping you on their service. Now the FCC believes that this proposal would simplify the process of switching carriers by establishing a clear and consistent unlocking policy across all providers. And basically they're emphasizing the importance of this initiative stating when you buy a phone, you should have the freedom to decide when to change the service to the carrier you want and not have the device you own stuck by practices that prevent you from making that choice. Now, People are not going to like that. Companies are not going to like that. And they're going to give you some challenges here. And they're saying that the carriers are going to probably fight this, saying that it could disrupt their business models and reduce their ability to offer subsidized phones. They're not selling no subsidized phones, y'all. They're selling anywhere from 800 on up, from Pixel, Samsung, OnePlus to iOS. But they're saying that, if they give you a, a discounted phone, then it would cause some problems. And basically to ensure a comprehensive understanding of the potential implications of this rule change, the FCC is actively seeking public comment on various aspects of the proposal. And lastly, they're saying that the agency is interested in feedback on whether the unlocking requirement should apply to both existing and future contracts the potential impact on service providers incentives to offer discounted phones and whether the rule would benefit small providers, new entrants and resellers in the market. The commission will vote on the proposal during its open meeting on July 18th. Before I ask Matt, was what are his thoughts on this? I have to ask the audience. We have to ask them and let them feel, feel valued. Let's see. What do you think of this proposed unlock rule? Let's see. What do you think of the proposed? Do you, what do you think of the FCC proposed unlock rule? One, on your phone. I like this. I paid for my phone. Why can't I unlock it? Two, the FCC should leave this matter alone. Three, I think this should have been implemented already. Or four, who cares? One, two, three, or four. Let us know in the comments. What do you think of the FCC proposed unlock rule? Matt, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Okay. Let's go. <laughs> First, this is in public review. So this is at the very early stages. Second, I don't think they've clearly articulated the benefit to the user. Now they did say, the only thing they said, and they said it four different times in different sentences, but it's all the same thing, is people will be able to switch. And that's a benefit because they can switch whenever. Like. Is that really a benefit? But maybe it is, maybe it is, okay? Second idea, second point is all of the downsides. These carriers, the reason you're paying your phone in installments is so they can, so they can end up where they need to be at the end of the installment period. If you jump out in the middle, then they're not going to get your money. So if, if T-Mobile sells you a phone, T-Mobile will give you a breakdown of payments over two years for what they need for the service. If you jump out in three months, then you're not going to be able to get those deals. Basically, you're probably going to pay full freight for the hardware if this goes into effect. So no more $30 a month, $60 a month plans 
for splitting up the hardware. Also, don't some phones only work on certain carriers? Maybe that's not a big deal anymore with the the new protocols because they had the 700 megahertz um, uh, fourth, uh, the third generation, and now it's fourth or fifth. But I think some phones can't be on other carriers because the radio isn't doesn't have the hardware in it to support other carriers. So this might be impossible in some phones. And then two, all the low cost perks to break up a cell phone service plan over two years is probably gonna go out the window. So consumers are gonna have less payment choices that are friendly and more, and the payment choice they are going to have is gonna be unfriendly and hurtful I don't know. This doesn't seem like it's benefiting anyone. Or if it does benefit because you can have the freedom to move around, it's going to come with a whole bunch of downsides. So like the downsides, the unintended consequences are going to overtake whatever little benefit there is. I don't know. I don't think this is going to fly. I don't think there's enough benefit to the end user. And what little benefit there is probably going to be way offset by more hardships downstream. That's my thought. CDMA versus GSM. And I think that technology is gone with CDMA. If I'm correct, I may be wrong, but I know that GSM was on T-Mobile and AT&T, who that Sprint was on AT&T. I mean, excuse me, it was on CDMA. But isn't there CDMA a whole like 3G, 4G, 5G thing? Well, Not all phones can work in those bands. Yeah, but I think CDMA was under Sprint, but now that Sprint got bailed out by T-Mobile, I'm not sure if everything's been converted over to GSM. I'm not sure what band Verizon is on, but I know that with a GSM phone, you could take the phone out of the country and you can swap SIM cards, whereas with CDMA, you could not do that. But now yeah, with this I, I 3, just... 4, and 5, 3G is gone, so it's 4G and 5G now. But we I do agree with you. The... I need to see, whoever's lobbying for this, I need to see their reasons for why this is a good thing. Who's getting rich off of this? This is not clear. There's a lot. This seems very ill put together. It doesn't seem well thought out. And something more is happening under the hood, which which we're not able to really pinpoint. That That's my thoughts. I don't know. Am I crazy, audience? Who knows? And, and I probably am crazy. In the trading says buy an Asian make for half the price like Oppo with all the features and more of the expensive bigger players. Wow. And I think Oppo is a great phone, but unfortunately here in America, Oppo is not sold. It's not you can't walk into a, a retail a, a cellular retail store and say, I want an Oppo phone. Unfortunately, they have it locked down the Samsung, Google, and iOS or Apple, they have it locked down to where most of their phones are pretty much, they've cornered the market inside of all of these carriers places. So unless you buy the phone outright on eBay or on Amazon or buy it when you fly, get it abroad and have it shipped in, you can't buy some of these other phones such as a Huawei, which is banned in the United States, and then Oppo, and I think there's a couple other phones that are really good. I can't think of the name brands, but you have to buy those phones outright and then bring and just say, I want to have my service turned on. But if something happens to that phone, you're on your own. So, yeah, that's uh, what's yeah. going on. There's there's something more behind all of this. That's yeah. all. Somebody probably made somebody rump mad or something happened with somebody's bill, and they probably said no we need to do something about this and uh, yeah that's what they probably did they just said hey um we're gonna figure this out and handle this if this is a big problem have a class action lawsuit I, it doesn't sound like it that that's warranted and this is another way to sneak something in to get what someone wants but we'll see <laughs> this is just this is a comment period i'm not worried about this yeah if this um, was pending i have a phone oh, that didn't system. have a sim card and most of these companies have SIM cards in their phone. So if you have a phone that don't have a SIM card, would it be impossible to take it to another company? Probably not. 
No. That's hard you, to say. We don't know. If you don't have a SIM card, you, you should be able to, you got to think, like when you go abroad or when you travel abroad, Revis, you don't need a SIM card. You need a SIM card, but you're paying for data. Whereas over here, you're paying for uh, data. So that's why Cricket, um, Mint Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, that's why we use them because we need data and they lock up the lines. I don't know how they do it because when you go abroad, you don't pay for an actual, you pay for Wi-Fi. And when you go use Wi-Fi, that's why people use WhatsApp. That's why people use their, they, they're paying for internet. So as long as I have internet, I can make my phone calls abroad. But here in the United States, it's a little different. I hope okay. that makes sense. Okay. All right, let me see. Lisa Maria says the difference between data and data is, <laughs> she said, what's the difference? All right, so I guess I, I may have said that wrong. So you're paying for the SIM card in Europe, you're paying for Wi-Fi. So you're basically paying for a SIM card and it gives you data or Wi-Fi, quote unquote. Here in the United States, you're getting connected to that person's or that company's line, right? So when you get connected to their line, or to their cell towers, shall I say. That's a, probably the better phrase to use. You're using their cell towers. So you they're giving you X amount of gigs for free for Wi-Fi. But I hope I'm saying this right, Lisa Maria. The data that you have, you're paying for the data because it's like you get unlimited data, talk, text, and web. Whereas overseas, you don't get unlimited talk, text, and web. You're paying for Wi-Fi by itself. I hope that is saying that. And the trading says you get unlimited data in Europe and you pay per month. So like when I go over to Europe, I find a way to, let me see if I get that comment on the screen. This is what Ender trading is saying. He says you get unlimited data in Europe and you pay per month or you pay until you run out. So I just get a card that has 20 gigs worth of Wi-Fi or 20 gigs worth of data on there. Whereas here in the United States, you're paying for a monthly plan and they're capping you so that way they can make their money. Because unfortunately in Europe, you come, you're coming out cheaper paying, you pay for your phone. All you do is just take the SIM card out, use their phone. If your phone is unlocked or you get a 30 day unlock or a 45 day unlock, you're good to go. And you can use your phone in Europe. And as long as you have their unlimited Wi-Fi plan, you can use it for YouTube, Facebook, WhatsApp or browsing other websites, but you're not calling anybody while you're over there. You're literally just using it for Wi-Fi. So I hope that helps. And I hope I can, he says, yes, you can do that. As, you can do that as well. So WhatsApp uses Wi-Fi for texts and calls, right? So Lisa Maria, you're right on that. They are mm -hmm. using Wi-Fi for texts and calls and it has its own. And I don't know how, maybe we'll do a story on how WhatsApp actually works because you all you need is Wi-Fi to use WhatsApp versus using an actual phone number for. If I'm saying this correct, you're using an actual phone number for the United States and you uh, for their data plans. I hope I'm saying that right. It's the Lab Tech Show. Join us Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern at thelabtechshow.com. Embrace it or get left behind. All righty then.